Mirage, I'm so honored to have you here today. I think my audience is going to, we're going to take a journey. <laughs> we're going to take them through a journey today. And I think so many people can relate. For me and my world, so many people are brought into health because they had to, because something is going wrong, right? And that's so much of my clientele. It's so much of my following is like, hey, something's not right. I don't feel right. People are telling me I'm fine. Something's wrong. What do I do? And they're looking for these possibly outside of the box approaches because being on some medication or, you know, what they're doing right now isn't working. And I'd love to start, I think you're going to blow them away by the end of this podcast, but could you, could you share with them a little bit of your journey on how you started in pharmacy and then what happened from there? Sure. Yeah. So actually I was a community pharmacist um, several years ago in my twenties and I really like got a feel for the the medical system and how it operates uh, pretty quickly. Uh, It was quite obvious, you know, that this is a real business this is an industry and and really what we're doing is we are um, basically giving out a lot of medications, a lot of drugs and like sometimes patients will go away literally with shopping bags full of drugs every single month. And this is the first time treatment in many cases. And, you know, the doctors are men to swear by this oath, first do no harm, but they break that time and time again. Um, and also another Hippocratic oath that not many people are aware of is you should never make profit in the sick room. So in a hospital, you're not meant to make profit, but you know, these, these hospitals are extremely profitable uh, businesses. So um, so I felt there was something not right here and I didn't see people getting very well. I saw more people getting sick than better. And I just felt disillusioned with the career. I, I just wasn't getting any job satisfaction. Mm. And I en- ended up actually getting quite depressed and disillusioned. And actually by stroke of luck, I went to a, um, Tony Robbins event and something that I would never have done because it just wasn't my kind of thing, but a friend <laughs> took me to his event. And it, it was the first time I heard anyone uh, talk about health in that way, about wow. diet and nutrition and mm. like, lifestyle and its impact on your health. Mm. So I was like, look, I've got a pharmacy here where there's sick people all the time. So I'm going to put Tony Robbins to the test, see if he's for real. Mm-hmm. And so I started to like change people's diets. So I, I would use like some, you know, what Tony Robbins would use as motivation strategies with NLP te- techniques. I would use some, some similar just by telling stories and analogies cool. and I'd convince people pretty quickly to, awesome. to get off, um, well, to actually change th- their diets from going from processed foods to normal foods. That was the, that was the easiest thing. I mean, I, you didn't have much time, so you couldn't go too deep on every single aspect of, of, your, of diet and nutrition. But I, I just did a simple thing, just taught people how to make their own food. I love that you said, can I just say, I love that you said, take, get off processed foods and just eat normal. I love that you that's all, that's it. normal foods, like instead of like, oh, you have to eat whole foods, healthy. Food. It's like, no, no, this is actually food. This is normal food. That's yeah, yeah. The, the bag of chips <laughs> with 50 million chemicals in it. That's not normal food. <laughs> I love exactly. that you use that word. <laughs> yeah. Just normal, real, like <laughs> yeah. as nature created right. food. So. So yeah, rather, so nat- natural food rather than um, processed, you know, factory-based food, right. which isn't really food, it's chemicals. So, so actually that was the first thing and I saw amazing results straight away for that. And even for myself. So I was like hooked. I was like motivated. I was like, there's something in this. And that took me down the rabbit hole and I started to really go deep on, on kind of diet and nutrition. And then what happened was I ended up getting promoted to the head office of um, one of the biggest corporations in the UK that has a pharmacy and a supermarket in the same place to come out. I came up with this kind of project to give out these healthy shopping lists based on people's conditions. And it could have helped a lot of people. And, you know, the pharmacist would be somebody who'd have like shopping lists or it would be mm-hmm. a person who'd be able to administer these prescription diets that I came up with. Mm-hmm. And actually it could have helped so many people, but six months into it, it some something happened and they had meetings after meetings trying to get anything done in a corporation is impossible and firstly actually just being in that environment i was like this is not for me i can't mm. work in this crazy mm-hmm. soulless robotic environment anyway <laughs> but you know i didn't have much of a choice so 
then to hear that you know they weren't going to do this project anymore uh you know and, and and it was watered down so much you know like to tell a supermarket that um their customers they shouldn't eat processed food it's like commercial suicide right so it, was, right. it wasn't going to work right and the director who actually employed me um for the job he had left so i didn't have any backup yeah and i think he just did it because it was his kind of conscience or something but anyway so i actually got really really depressed at this point i just lost faith mm -hmm. in humanity i was like you know how can they just not want this for their customers you know for the betterment of people and i knew that this this food had helped so many people this change mm -hmm. of diets but i then started to stop caring about myself and you know i i just went into a spiral and this is when i kind of got hit with a lightning bolt um it was like just some weird kind of moment it just happened so quickly hmm. over a period of few days where i started to get the symptoms of ulcer colitis and before i knew it i was literally i was housebound for almost a year and you know you're, you're talking about you're doing um plant medicine so funny enough that week where i got the symptoms a friend of mine had told me about doing ayahuasca uh and i didn't know anything about it but he was like oh let's let's do it they're doing a ceremony in um, london so you should come along so i actually went to do the ceremony like i had no idea that i had also clients at this point i was just mm. bleeding mm. quite a lot at this mm. time i had a disease and it was the most incredibly powerful. I've done psychedelics before that, mm -hmm. but this was something else. There was there's yeah. nothing you can compare to no. what, what happened in that in that moment. It was like it was something very prophetic, profound. Yeah. And a lot of what's evolved now in my life, kind of, you know, like aspects of it were in this yep. journey that I went through. Yeah. But. It was also when I got ulcer colitis. So not only did that happen, but then from that point on, for a year, I was housebound. I went through the most intense wow. pain as well emotionally because I was 30 odd years old. Gosh. I was bleeding out my ass like 40 times a day. You know, oh, I didn't gosh. know if I was ever going to be in a relationship again. I'd lost my job. Right. I had no money. Right. I had no idea if any money was going to oh, come gosh. in, you know. Um, yeah. I didn't think I, I literally was ready to die. It was like surrender. Wow. Um, but part of me just didn't care too much. I was like, I was okay with it. But you know, I was also deeply sad, you know, for humanity. I'd lost my faith in humanity. Yeah. But something in that ayahuasca gave me some kind of faith as well, doing mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. it it was like it I forgot about that for a while until like some real good fortune came away when like they say god stands for gift of desperation i was in this like really yeah. desperate moment where the doctor yeah. told me you're gonna have your um uh either have your colon removed or you can be a guinea pig for a drug that hasn't even been tested before and they were the only two options left because the other stuff wasn't working I, and i didn't want to keep taking steroids it's the symptoms are horrible the side effects mm -hmm. so i didn't want to I, I literally i never saw the doctor again after this and I was like, look, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to like man up. I've got to do something about this. I've got to, I can't give up hope. Mm. And I prayed pretty intensely at this time. And luckily, stroke of fate, our close friend of our family, um, who's now a very close friend, Swami Ambikananda, she's a yoga teacher in the UK. She basically said to me, look, you've got a gift here. If you can heal yourself from this, mm -hmm. uh, you could be an amazing role model to other people. Wow, beautiful. And she basically said, look, there's no guarantees, but I, she can teach me like some of the traditional techniques from pranayama, yoga, Ayurveda, and point me in the direction of stuff, which I could read and, and go deeper mm -hmm. into. Cool. And, you know, that could help. And she also did some like acupuncture stuff. And, but what really started to work like magic was this um, combination of breathing techniques with mantras, like saying mm -hmm. affirmations. Mm -hmm. So I use these special breathing techniques with this visualization techniques. And I, I would actually start going to the spa, the sauna, and start doing this like meditation techniques in mm. the sauna. And then I got really deep into Ayurveda and I started to learn much more about diet. Like 
The problem with all the Tony Robbins stuff back then was it's all acid alkaline, you know, raw mm -hmm. vegan, everyone's drinking spirulina and all this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, that doesn't work for everyone. And I felt that. Mm. You know, in ulcer clients, for most people who get ulcer clients, raw food is horrible. It, oh, it yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> No, it's, it makes it much worse. Yeah. So in Ayurveda, there's no one size fits all, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to customize um, the diets based on your energy types and your personality mm -hmm. types. So you figure all this out through a series of questions. Mm -hmm. And so I realized then that actually that I need more grounding, nourishing foods. And I actually started to use bone broths and start to eat beef again. Yeah. And, and I discovered colostrum. And colostrum yeah. is like the real reason why cows are considered holy in India because mm. the Ayurvedic physicians would give colostrum as medicine mm. and it has amazing healing effects with the gut. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah, I, um, within a few months I was back to normal again, full fitness. What were you eating? Were, were, you, were you getting rid of, I mean, I, so I'm assuming you were getting rid of all the raw vegetables and things like that, but all, were you getting rid of plants altogether for a minute to he, let your gut heal or, was yeah, mostly... I was on a pretty, I was into paleo way before there was yeah. such a thing as paleo diet. Uh -huh. They used to call it the specific carbohydrate diet. But in, a, in the Ayurvedic system, there's, uh -huh. it's like a vata diet, an anti-vata. So it's pacifying the air, excess air. Mm -hmm. And you need grounding, nourishing foods. And, mm -hmm. and that's the type that may be, they're okay to eat meat. Like mm -hmm. in Ayurveda, like the, the, the more earthy people shouldn't eat meat because they put on too much weight. Mm. Uh, but the Vata people like me just lose weight. If I'm, if I'm just on a raw food diet, I'm just like a stick insect mm. and I don't have wow. any energy and I get very lightheaded and stuff. But wow. if I have the right food for my body type, it builds properly, you know, and I, my brain functions with clarity and stuff. So, Hello. but everyone's unique. So everyone's different. Yeah. So I don't like it when people. Oh yeah. Diets and people me neither. <laughs> yeah. And all this, Cause it's not yeah. true. Right. So, yeah. So that was, wow. that was the amazing thing. But what really, um, oh, and the, the bit I should have talked about the first was the music. So the music, going back into creativity and getting back into my passion for music. I was always into music, making music. Is what I used to, I was a DJ when I was younger. And, oh, okay. But, right on. but I went back into it and I started to make all this brainwave and training music and, ah. and music meditation. And it just enhanced the whole process of the breathing and so rad. And one thing led to another. I was like, I ended up making a, a business around that, like selling therapeutic music and license to it for therapists. And lots of healing cool. centers, spas start to use yeah. it. And people like Marissa Peer, who you may have heard of, who's a well known hypnotherapist, she, she started using it and we became Amazing. good friends. And, yeah, how does, the, how does the average person take a look into this? Can 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 you get access to it? Just somebody listening? Yeah, you... yeah, yeah. So we have a, a um, somabreath.com website. Mm -hmm. And on there, you can go to the store and you'll see we have lots of this cool. brainwave music on there. Right on. I'm going to get some. Get but there's also a website uh, called uh, tripnoralmeditation.com or just tripnoral.com. And you can also look it up in Google and in, in YouTube. I don't really... I'll put it in the show anymore. notes, guys. Because <laughs> every all of our energy has gone into what we're doing now is Soma Breath, because that that yeah. brings everything together. Cool. And we we give our instructors, we we create like therapists and instructors through our school. We give them all the tools, like these different techniques and tools they can use. So they're 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 fully equipped with all the brainwave music that I've produced, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Can we dive into this a little bit? Cause I was looking at Soma breath and I was um, watching, you know, the video you have there of the testimonials and you can feel the energy of the people at, you know, it, it looks like it's at one of your events. Um, and you can feel the vibration that they're at. They are just like, <laughs> like the first woman. is so she's just like, I know my purpose. I know when I'm going to do it. I know how I'm going to do it. I'm like, <laughs> I love her. Amazing. I know that space. I have been in that space. That's a beautiful place yes. to be. And it, it, um, for me with my experience and breath, now I haven't done your technique, which I definitely want to, I'm very excited to try it, but just from holotropic breath workshops that I've gone to, or when I was at Rhythmia doing ayahuasca, um, Christian Minson there taught, uh, he calls it transformational breath work. So I've done some different 
types of breath work. And there is something wildly emotionally healing about breath work. It's, um, for me, it's, it's like a roadblock remover. So I've had many plant medicine journeys, many psychedelic journeys. Um, those are also roadblock removers. They open you up, but there's something I noticed so specifically about the breath that it's like the things that I don't want to deal with these like little emotional things that I'm not seeing. I just get taught immediately. This is the stuff that you're not seeing. This is what you, this is where these are your blind spots. That's what I feel like happens to me. And once I see them, it's kind of like a monster in the closet thing. Like you're a little kid and you see this monster in the closet and you flip the light on and it's just like your hockey stick and your jacket or whatever. Like that, <laughs> that's what breath work feels like to me when I process things. It's like, oh, oh, it's just a hockey stick. Got it. You know, it's just this hmm. wildly healing thing. And I usually cry. I usually ball. I mean, I always do. <laughs> I ball my <laughs> eyes out. It's just wildly healing. And um, for me, I feel that space of healing. I feel that space. I mean, like, I mean, I'm on level 10 billion afterwards. I am just like, I get it. I see it. Wow. I feel so centered and grounded. And so I just wanted to hear a little bit more about your process, what you're doing with people. I know that you're doing the music, um, but you're doing events. Can you talk a little bit more about what exactly you do, how you're integrating the pranayama? Like, what does this look like? And then, you know, yeah, yeah. how Sorry. people can find you. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Great question. So so there is all these different types of breathwork. Like, so breathwork is like an umbrella word for various different styles. But originally it was more known for holotropic rebirthing. That's, that's kind of what made the name of breathwork. But, uh-huh. you know, now it's kind of like, um, like pranayama is, called, is classed under breathwork. And you know, even sometimes qigong is and things like that. So first you've got to make a distinction from, from those different styles. So basically... Mm-hmm. Holotropic uh, was made by Stan, Stanislav Grof because mm-hmm. uh, he was trying to find a alternative to um, LSD because yep. he was one of the first psychotherapists who used LSD and he mm-hmm. then he got banned and he wanted a replacement and he found that this this kind of breathing uh, like you know, intense breathing kind of it, it creates hallucinogenic effects in people mm-hmm. which was also therapeutic it kind of had a multifaceted effect so he started using that and wrote lots of books about it and all that mm-hmm. and then rebirthing kind of came out about the same time same kind of it's pretty much the same technique uh but he put a different twist on it he said he got it from an immortal babaji leonard or uh called babaji an immortal yogi called babaji who lives mm-hmm. for thousands of years mm-hmm. he gave him this um technique wow. and it's a <laughs> technique of immortality huge great claims but um yeah but still it, 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 it's got a lot of um, people using it, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's very popular and it, it obviously works and, and helps for what it's intended for, Definitely. which is like a psychotherapeutic tool. Right. Um, and it kind of helps release emotional traumas and stress. Yeah. In the yeah. body. Uh, so pranayama is different. Pranayama is more like a library of different techniques. So with pranayama, it's more like it's like a pharmacy of different techniques, you know, so you've got stuff for, and each one actually taps into the autonomic nervous system. So you either lowering blood pressure, heart rate, or you can speed up blood pressure. I mean, speed up heart rate, raise blood pressure. You can hmm. increase your body temperature. You can cool your body down. You can increase oxygen supply to the muscles. You know, you can uh, get into altered states of consciousness. You know? So there's different types of techniques for different uses. Interesting. You know, even ones that flush the lymphatic system, help you ah. drain. And this is just system. through so, through different breathing techniques. You can Yeah, different breathing different techniques and a few different like okay. ways of using energy locks, you know, uh, certain mm-hmm. asana, like postures you'd mm-hmm. use. It mm-hmm. enhances the whole thing. Because mm-hmm. yoga and pranayama really, they, they go, pranayama is a branch of yoga. So yeah. they go, it goes together. It shouldn't be separate. You know, so it's the same thing together. It works like yoga. Every yoga asana should be using the breath with it. Um, yeah. Are you familiar with the branches of yoga? That's an interesting thing. I think, you know, someone was filling me in on that a couple of years ago and I, I just didn't know. I didn't know, you know, that Ayurveda and there's more, it's not yeah. just yoga. It's not just isolated. There's all the branches. Do you know what they all are by chance? Yeah. 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 I mean the main, there's, there's diff- different ones, but the main ones, um, you know, is like that you, we really should all understand is the common one is the asana, obviously. All right. 
Which is the poses is the that postures, we think of. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then pranayama is a core part of this. Then you have like, you know, there's concentration. There's the mantra. So there's, there's devotional okay. yoga. Uh-huh. There's like, there's a bhakti. And then there's karma yoga by action. And okay. there's all these different, these are the different yeah. limbs. Yeah. And yeah. It, that's why the yoga really is a, it's a way of life. Right. And each limb should be, it's just really like a way to live your life. It's a, yeah, it's beautiful. It's a way to live a, a life more in balance with, with your environment, your surroundings, and, and to create an alignment with where you want to be in your life, you know, so you can stay peace of mind. That's the idea of yoga is peace of mind. It's to gain mastery of the mind. And so pranayama is actually like one of the most important for uh, really getting into like, like what we call like superhuman like states like mm-hmm. where you where you super conscious states where you can alter your consciousness you can strengthen every single cell in the body you can stay super healthy you can also enhance the asana the process of asana and you can also use it as a way for meditation so mastering pranayama is one of the most fundamental important parts of yoga but it's actually the most ignored and left out mm. Um, and prana, pranayama literally means energy control. Mm. Okay? Prana means energy, wow. yama means control. Mm. And that makes sense because when you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen, oxygen comes in and it produces energy. That's how you produce energy. Yeah. Oxygen right. burns glucose to produce carbon dioxide, water, and ATP energy, which is this light photonic uh, energy. And it's mm-hmm. the currency of, of energy in the body. It's, it's how yeah. every cell can, communicates with each other as well. Right. So, so basically by controlling energy through breath, breath control, we can control the energy within and by controlling the energy within, because quantum science states E equals N, energy equals matter. The idea is that by controlling the energy on the inner world, we can control the energy on the outer world. We can create an alignment of how we, what we want to, to experience on the inside to project on the outside. You know? So, so there's also like tantric yoga, the art of manifesting and, and, you know, manipulating energy and, you know, it gets into the more esoteric yeah. traditions of creating magic and things like that. Uh-huh. But yeah, there, there's a lot, there's so much to it, so much depth to it. So what I've done is I've looked at it um, as the key pranayama techniques that I found and has the science to show have the most benefits for your s- spiritual and physical health. <clears throat> so basically, there's different ways that you can actually use the breath, breath control. You know? So you can use the breath to, to create a lot of oxygen coming in rapidly but what, what, by breathing faster. But that, what that also means is you'll breathe out a lot of carbon dioxide. <clears throat> and you alter the... the balance of oxygen carbon dioxide in your bloodstream you change the ph and this creates this state called respiratory alkalosis and you may you may be familiar with this rapid breathing techniques right mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. Holotropic. yeah so basically what that's doing is that it's changing the ph of your blood and stanislav groff actually talks about this in one of his books <clears throat> where he says that one of the ideas of why this works maybe because it's eliciting like a near-death ex- effect mm, mm. <clears throat> where you're mm-hmm. tricking the body into thinking that it's dying and what happens then is it you, your body produces similar chemicals as what's released at point of near death so it releases you know, DMT then when you do is it <laughs> maybe, is that what's being released maybe. Or, or, an okay. indo- or an indigenous version of it okay so they say that DMT doesn't only exist in plants, or it doesn't really. Yeah. You have very minute amounts. Yeah, in yeah. Because when you die, if people are listening, produce, like when you die, yeah. you release a ton of DMT. That's what yeah. they found, right? So yeah, it makes and it's sense. It's very hard to measure it in the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all theory. Everything's speculation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Really hard to, but the effects are. Some people describe them as like ayahuasca trips, you know, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mushroom trips and things mm-hmm. like that. I don't get crazy visuals on this, but I get the full body bliss and yeah. 
my mind definitely goes into auto say it's consciousness. Yes. But some people have these powerful DMT like visions as well. That's crazy. Wow. <clears throat> so so there's something going on with that. Yeah. And it could explain why it was a tool for psychotherapy that like replaces things like mushrooms, LSD, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And rebirthing has the same kind of effect. But then there's the other, so the other, in pranayama, actually, what you can do is you can slow the breathing. So they, they have techniques for that in pranayama as well. Uh, but you can also slow the breathing down, hmm. completely slow it down. And you can also train yourself. We all have a natural resting heart rate and breath rate, breathing rate. And actually, you can train yourself to be so efficient using oxygen that your natural resting breath rate goes right down. <clears throat> and there's a reason why this is important. Because like yoga and pranayama, they were, they were developed by studying animals in nature. So mm-hmm. if you observe um, animals in nature, okay, those animals that live a very long period of time, like elephants and uh, turtles, <clears throat> they basically breathe very, very slow breathing rates, like two to four breaths per minute. Wow. Animals that actually don't live a very long time, like rats and mice, Mm -hmm. they breathe at like 20, 40 breaths per minute. And humans live around 70, 80 years. We actually have around 10 to 15 breaths per minute average. Okay. But very, very healthy people have much slower breathing rates. Mm. And you'll notice people who are sick or they've got disease, they breathe much faster and they pant. <laughs> they breathe like that much more. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry, let's go down. This is it because they're... This dries my air. Oh, is it because... The AC room. Oh, I see. Huh? Is it because they're not as efficient at managing oxygen in their bodies? Is that... Whereas like healthy yes. people are exercising more and they've taught their... They put their bodies in positions where there isn't as much oxygen or they're requiring more oxygen so they just become more efficient at managing it? There you go. You got it. So that's actually the mechanism of... And probably the goal of... What I figured out for pranayama hmm. is to make you super efficient at using oxygen. So you need to breathe less. This brings your breathing like down to like the speed of like elephants and turtles. <clears throat> and what mm. um, the reason for doing this is because there's so science now shows the problem of oxygen. And there's a doctor, a uh, scientist called Helmut C, he's a professor who coined the term oxidative stress. And he said, mm. although, although it's very, very hard for humans to live without oxygen. You know, if you stop breathing for several minutes, you're going to die. It's also very hard for humans to live with oxygen. The reason why is because oxygen is corrosive, causes stress on the body. It's oxidizing. It burns things. It combusts. Mm-hmm. It creates fire. So we have like an inner fire going on all the time, which is mm-hmm. our, in our mitochondria producing light, fire, ATP mm-hmm. energy. All right. Mm-hmm. So... So oxygen actually makes us age. So the more efficient you are at using oxygen, the less you need to breathe, the right. less of the oxygen stress you get. And it also generally means that you are just healthier. Everything runs more efficiently as well. The less oxygen you need, the more adapted you are to having oxygen. Now, here's the other benefit of this. And it comes to this one technique in pranayama called kumbhaka. When you become very efficient using oxygen, you're fine that you can hold your breath for longer and longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. And another point of this is um, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the most important gases in the body. We think that it's a waste gas, but it's actually one of the most important. The reason why is because carbon dioxide is essential to keep blood vessels dilated. And it works with another ingredient, nitric mm-hmm. oxide, mm-hmm. which uh, is, is an antioxidant, has many different uses. It's a vasodilator, and it helps get oxygen to the places it needs to go more efficiently. So nitric oxide is super important. Now, when you slow breathing right down, you produce more carbon dioxide, you have more nitric oxide. If you breathe very fast, you blow all the carbon dioxide out. This is why it changes the pH, right? Mm. Uh, we, 
what makes us breathe again is carbon dioxide or as well. So it's what triggers our brain to breathe again. So actually, if you can have a very high tolerance for carbon dioxide, meaning you can handle more, to- your brain doesn't freak out, cause you yeah. to breathe again. This has two amazing effects. Firstly, it means you can, um, you can handle more carbon dioxide, you slow your breathing down, you don't need to breathe as, as often as well. But also what it means is that um, you can hold your breath for increasing in long periods of time, right? And it means you can go into these very deep meditative states. Mm. When you hold your breath with no air in the lungs, it's literally like pressing pause on your life mm. because life is just a series of inhales and exhales, right? Yeah. As soon as you hold your breath and you hold on, you exhale, you expire. You know, like what expire yeah. is another word for it is death. Die. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Die. But you, you switch off. It's like a defrag switch for your mind. So mm. holding your breath on the exhale, the longer you can do it, the deeper and deeper into these depths of meditation you can get into. And these like very, very profound, like Nirvana, Samadhi like states. Well, how long and are what you happens talking? Is you, how long, how long, you, how long do people get, you know, how, what is average for someone who's experienced with this? Oh, like, I mean, I can get over four minutes. If I practice, I can get over four minutes. But I've sat with, like, Wim Hof is a very good friend of mine. Oh. I've sat with him, and he's done, like, eight, nine minutes before, like, crazy shit. You don't he's even understand. He's been for, like, I love 30, him. 40. He's been I doing it for, like, him. years. I Seriously, yeah, I cry when I listen to Wim. I'm just like, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm like, I don't fangirl over very many people, but if Wim goes live, I'm like, I love you, Wim. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm Everyone such a super him. fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, and I, I know what you're talking about. I experienced this a little bit when I did the transformational breath work, which is just another, you know, another version. Um, when I was at Rhythmia and doing ayahuasca and he would have us do that. And normally, yeah, you, it's, you get a little panicky, you know, it's kind of like if you don't have good blood sugar regulation, it reminds me of that when you're like, your blood sugar's dropping and you're like, Oh my gosh, I need something to eat right now. Like if you haven't done fasting, you haven't done intermittent fasting, you don't exercise. I used to get like that and panic and breath is kind of like that for me. So normally it'd be like, hold your breath. And it's like, Oh my gosh, you can like feel the panic rising (laughs) of like, I can't do this anymore. But after a session, I, I mean, we, he had us do that. And I was like, who am I? Like, I mean, that was mind blowing for all of us to be like, there was no panic. I was like, Oh my gosh, I think I could like never breathe again. Like what is going, (laughs) what is going on? So it's really, really incredible. I've experienced what you're talking about. Overrides the fear response. So carbon dioxide as well is associated with anxiety anxiety so mm. like basically if you don't have a good tolerance to carbon dioxide um it's because you are scared of not getting that breath you know? wow. so you breathe yeah, that's why you don't have a good tolerance to carbon dioxide so you mm. the more carbon dioxide you can handle it starts to override the fear response and that will affect you in other areas of your life so if Definitely. you're quite an anxious panicky person you're not going to have usually good carbon dioxide tolerance the more you start to practice um, these breath retention techniques, you override that, exaggerate fear response, and you start to have more confidence. You can improve your self-esteem, Amazing. help you overcome yeah. fear. And so there's a lot of different like psycho-spiritual benefits as well. Even just, yeah, I've experienced that also just with doing cold showers consistently, right? Like I've always loved cold plunges and, you know, but it's like, I have to drive to a day spa where they have a cold plunge. And I do that once every three months or something. That's not super consistent. It's a cool experience, but cold showers allow me to have that on the daily. And I experience what you're talking about because there's, you have no other choice. You know, when I first here in Utah, where I live, I mean, they get cold in the winter, the ground is frozen. It is, it's brutal. And so when I first started, it was definitely kind of that fear response, that freak out of like, Oh, 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 you know, I'm like freaking out. And my kids are like, mom, are you taking a cold shower? (laughs) And I'm like, how'd you know, you know? Um, but then soon you learn to just breathe through it. And it's this beautiful, like you feel like this stoic badass that nothing can stop me. And you just go, I would just straight into breath of like, I got this, you know, when you breathe deeply like that and it totally translated to other areas of my life. Like you're saying completely, it was like, no, I got this. I know how to calm myself down in the middle of a storm. Right. So I, yeah. I've experienced that in my life. And autoimmune diseases actually is, I believe is fear manifest. So, wow. so every, every cell in the body, if you look at evolution, they come together, um, for some reason. And if you look at like in the olden days, 
uh, like we're talking millions of years ago, we were tiny single cell creatures. Mm -hmm. And one day, like after getting tired of fighting with each other constantly, they came together and formed a multicellular organism. And they came together on the basis of love, trust, and collaboration, connection. Mm. And that formed a multicellular organism that was better, like more, um, you know, robust than the one before, the, the multicellular one. So that then evolved into after many, many years uh, of evolution into, if you believe in this theory of evolution, into us humans. And what that means is that actually every single cell in our body came together on the basis of connection, collaboration, mm. trust, beautiful faith, you know. Yeah. And love. Now, if you live in a very hostile environment, if you are grown up in stress, if you like I was working a shit job, I hate it. I was mm -hmm. full of hate, mm -hmm. full of anger, full mm -hmm. of fear. And over time, that just manifests that anxiety, that fear, that rage, that anger. Wow. It burns like a fire inside. And in Ayurveda, it talks all about this and how it affects your energies in different ways. So with my energy type, the vata, pitta, fire, and air type, so you, you can have a combination of, of two of them. Um, it says there that you are more susceptible to colon ulcers, which is exactly what I had. Wow. I like this. Wow. It, it said it. I was like, holy crap. Now it all makes sense. So, <laughs> so you know, so, I, so overcoming fear, overcoming hatred, overcoming these emotions, not, letting, not holding on to them, you know, and not making a whole identity wow. around them. Wow, wow. It is wow. the only way, in my opinion, to really, like, heal yourself. And I don't believe in cure because cure means taking somebody back to how they were before. You can never... Right. For chronic disease, you never cure someone. You actually elevate them. Yeah, they yeah. A whole different person. Their whole personality changes, their character changes. They're, they, they have to deal with past and make peace with it. They have to deal with the present... And, and be at peace with it. And they have to embrace the future as though uh, they have courage, right? And Well, and it's beautiful because you, you wouldn't want, yeah, the, the, you wouldn't, yeah. why would you want to go back to the version of you that kind of couldn't handle <laughs> that stress that you went through? Now you're stronger, you know, it's just like a muscle that's been strengthened or in, anything like that. Like uh, even our cells can become that way. I love Zach Bush. I don't know if you're a Zach Bush fan, Dr. Zach Bush, but he talks about even how, like he's, a, obviously a huge fighter of glyphosate. He's one of the, you know, in my opinion, top proponents of fighting that in the world. But he talks about how our cells, can, once they are healed properly, actually become stronger because of that opposition that they had. So I love, I just love what you're saying there is like, you're, I get this all the time with weight loss clients. Like, I just want to go back to what I was when I got married. And I'm like, you're yes. never going to be that person again, ever. Why yeah. would you want to be that person? You have so much more experience under your belt. You have so much more to offer now. Like what can you, today's ground zero. What can you achieve now with all of that wisdom, all that experience that you have now? You can go way higher than you were then. You didn't know anything back then. <laughs> you're just you a it. kid. <laughs> Love that perspective. You got it. Amazing. No, wow. Absolutely. That's, that's it. So um, one other thing, I, Ayurveda, I just have to say, um, my last night of ayahuasca, we had an Ayurvedic doctor come and he was the shaman oh. that led the ceremony. And afterwards, um, and speaking of, you know, I've, I have many podcast episodes about ayahuasca because um, it's just so profound in my life. But one of one of the things I like to say, I, I, there's a lot of fear around these things. There's a lot. I mean, we all went through the D.A.R.E. program here in the United States, which is like, you know, say no to drugs and all drugs are the same. And it's like, to me, it's criminal that we're <laughs> um, grouping ayahuasca. That's this ancient, beautiful, ceremonial, healing, spiritual experience with you know, in my opinion, like taking Accutane for your acne is like way worse, <laughs> way worse. And it's legal. And it's like, it's going to ruin your life. I watched it happen to my college roommate, you know? So like, anyway, it's just crazy to me that they've been lumped together as the same thing when they're not at all. And one of the things that I learned is that the medicine will give you what it needs. I do believe that I have experienced that so many times. And for me, that last night of ayahuasca and the brew is called Yahe, which Yahe, which is like the, the really intense. It's supposed to be really intense. I slept through the whole thing, slept like a baby. Mm. And I was going through so much trauma at that time in my life that I think that the medicine was like, she needs mm. gentle. She needs healing. <laughs> she needs sleep. We can yeah. kick her. We can kick her ass later. Right now she needs love and peace and calm. <laughs> and, 
nice. <laughs> and, um, and I'm very like, I love to go hard. I love to push limits. I love a challenge. So I was like, yes, I want to puke. I want a diarrhea. I want, <laughs> I want it all. I want to <laughs> get sucked into the ground and think I'm dying nice. and I want it. But no, the medicine was like, no girl, no, you're going to, you're going to rest. And, um, anyway, I woke up from my beautiful nap <laughs> that I had and, <laughs> um, the, the Ayurvedic doctor, one thing that I, I love so much. Well, first I'll say, I felt, I felt like I finally found my people. I mean, he, everything he was teaching, it was just beautiful, like very paternal love experience where he was just like, I am going to teach you a bunch of wisdom right now about how to take care of your body. And I had never in my life experienced such a like, yes, yes, exactly. That's what I feel. That's intuitively like what I've learned through loving my body mm-hmm. and nature and connect. I was just like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like furiously writing notes. I've like hardly written notes the whole time, but Ayurveda, I think is, you know, although I'm, I'm obviously not an Ayurvedic practitioner and I, but I, I use principles in it because it is so, so connected to, in, in my opinion, our, like our connection to nature, which is what we are, right. It's teaching you that yes. it's, it's a very loving, loving approach to the body. And just like you have explained so beautifully in this episode, it's, it's not like, Hey, like, you know, I'm a proponent of keto, for example, but sometimes I hate being a proponent of keto because it's this very blanket statement, like do keto. That's the answer. We found the answer for all humans. It's keto. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like shoot me now. Like that's not for everybody. You know, it's a, it's a, it's like a machine gun metabolic tool. You don't always have to use it, you know? And I love that Ayurveda also has that, um, that, that, in my opinion, it's loving. It's a loving approach to say like, Hey, like, let's look, let's actually take some time here to see what's going on with you and what you need. You know, it's, it's beautiful. Yes. So, um, I, I'm, I'm such a fan and I love that you're teaching pranayama. Cause I, when I was reading about you, I was like, I don't know anything about pranayama. I don't know. Like where, where do I start? And I think this is the thing with breath work. Um, I, so many of my friends, like they've heard Wim Hof or they've heard, you know, they've heard of breath work. They're like, I don't, they don't do it because they don't know where to start. They don't, they, they're right. like, where do I go? Like, what do I do? I just lay on my ground on my floor in my living room and just breathe rhythmically. Like, and so I love that you're bringing the education component there. Um, yes. And so I wanted to just like get into, cause I, I'm just curious myself and I'm sure my audience is too. Like, how do people partake of SOMA? Like, is there, are there online classes? Are there, you know, there's guided meditations, there's events. Like what, how do they learn more? How do, how do we get in on this? <laughs> great, great. Well, actually, we started off um, on the beach in Copangan where I live. Like, we're just like four or five people. Wow. Uh, I was, I had made all this music and I. I'd this is been, Thailand, yes? This is in Thailand, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now it's turned into um, a huge movement around the world uh, with almost a thousand instructors. Wow. Uh, doing this. Um, Amazing. Trained in these techniques. And. Uh, yeah, and it really it works like this. So basically, we have uh, a very, very um, like we're constantly adding new content. We've got quite a lot of content, very stacked and healthy uh, YouTube channel. F- with cool. you can pretty much learn everything on our YouTube channel. There's so much on there cool. uh, already. And we've got more we're adding to it for free because I like to give away as much as I can, value as possible. Yeah, and so and, it's Soma Breath, right? Correct, S-O-M-A, you guys, if you're listening. Yeah, so the YouTube channel on there, if you go to the playlist, How to Do Soma Breath, you can see uh, all the videos about it, breaking cool. it down. Cool. And you can try out our actual online sessions. Now, what I've created is this one experience. We call it Soma Awakening. And it's basically mm-hmm. a combination of different pranayama techniques. And you you do like... You can do like up to an hour session, which is much more psychedelic and yeah. takes you into, you know, these peak human experiences. But the short 22 minute dose is designed to give you like a daily dose of this. I call it intermittent hypoxic training. So you may have heard of this being into fitness, like high altitude training where you go yeah. up to mm-hmm. high altitudes and all that. So, so this technique is all about like, using breath retention in the right way with hmm. The very slow rhythm of breathing that creates this coherent states, but also prepares you to hold your breath for long periods of time. So that combined with, med- with the meditation music takes you into these really profound meditative states. So it combines also these visualization techniques, like intention setting, cool. um, like a guided meditation with these affirmations, and also the music all together with the breath. 
in one kind of experience. And so what we do is we have, we train instructors to be able to, to do what I call the energized meditation, which is a combination of movement techniques from yoga, uh, mantra, chanting mantra, like Aum, uh, in a way that actually stimulates the endocrine system, mm -hmm. like kind of wakes it up. And then followed by the breathing practice, which it basically brings it all together and it, and it trains you for this, with this intermittent hypoxic training. I'll tell you a little bit about intermittent hypoxic training. It's very important. Yeah. So you can look this up. High altitude training has become kind of a thing. Um, now there's more and more science behind it. And um, the way it works is you basically give somebody um, like a few minutes of normal oxygen and then a period of very low oxygen. Uh, for a few minutes and you keep rotating that and what it does is it simulates the effect of somebody going to a high altitude and then coming back down again and then going back up again and coming back down again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what that does is it when you when you lower oxygen for a brief period of time in the body your body starts to produce uh, more red blood cells it gets more um, blood mm -hmm. vessels being created uh, and it produces more carbon dioxide and nitric oxide. It dilates all the blood vessels, even in your heart and your, especially your brain. You can even awaken dormant parts of the brain that you don't use. It's like oh. an exercise for that. Mm. And with deeper practice, longer sessions, you can start holding your breath for like one, over two minutes, like one and a half plus minutes. What happens is if you get into low enough oxygen levels, you trigger... Uh, the awakening of st these certain stem cells in the body called very small embryonic-like stem cells. And these stem cells go to areas where there's inflammation. They have the ability to turn into any other cell. So they uh, use in healing, rep uh, restoration. And uh, actually stem cell clinics, you know, they use these stem cells. They cult culture them to use in treatments. But we can activate them with breath retention. This is how they're, they're activated. Even oh, intense oh. temperatures, the heat and mm. cold also activates them. That's one of the reasons why cold, I think, helps is because it is activating stem cells. So, so I've been doing a lot of research in this. I've been working with a doctor in, the, in India who trained me in, in pranayama, like quite deep level. Amazing. And he's actually a medical doctor and he's written mm. a lot of stuff on this. And, you know, I've, I've spent time with you know, people like Wim Hof and people like that. Mm -hmm. And I've dissected this, the very best stuff, but put this music together that drives the whole thing, makes it all fun and more enjoyable and easy to follow. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we train our instructors to be able to deliver what I call this energized meditation, because it's like, you're, it's not a passive meditation where you're not doing anything. You're mm -hmm. using your body, you're engaging the body and the mind as one. And you're actually using energy. You're, make, you're manipulating energy in the body. So we have this energized meditation routine, which instructors are trained to do, which is perfect for like health classes, fitness classes. At the moment, because we're all locked down, you know, everything's running online, uh, which is great through Zoom and things like that. You can do a lot. Mm -hmm. And people are delivering sessions through Zoom, like so yeah. many people are doing sessions like this through Zoom. And it helps in so many different ways. It, it lowers inflammation. It improves blood flow around the body, improves blood flow to the heart, to the mm -hmm. brain. Um, you know, it can wake up these stem cells, it, uh, it, it trains oxygen efficiency, you get more stamina. There are a few contraindications, which you can check out on our website, um, but most people can do this. Uh, but then with deeper practice, I've, we've recently just created uh, the breath therapist certification, where you're an instructor as well as trained in breath therapy. And what that means is uh you will learn how to use like the hypnotic language guided mental imagery to do guided meditation over these powerful breathwork sessions that can last an hour and an hour and a half that is all revolves around rhythmic breathing when you're breathing in a perfect oh. rhythm and mm -hmm. breath retention mm -hmm. when you breathe in these perfect rhythms okay different effects can happen like you can lower your heart rate by doubling your exhale time you can um, actually create more energy, produce more energy by doubling your inhale time versus your exhale time. And you can have a perfect rhythm, like in and out, exactly the same rate to a beat. And that creates this effect called coherence as well, where it harmonizes the function of your body. And basically, when you do these, this rhythmic breathing, you, 
every single basically function in your body is rhythmical. It has, so there's infradian rhythms, circadian, ultradian rhythms. These are functions hmm. that your life revolves around. Hmm. And they are all subservient to the rhythm of your breath. So when you breathe in a rhythm, even for a few minutes a day, yeah. it has this like harmonizing effect. That's why the foundation of yoga is rhythmic breathing. Hmm. So w- when you create these sequences that we create with rhythmic breathing, music, guided meditation, with the right language, the right words, you can literally create magic. You're like transforming wow. people's lives wow, wow, like, wow. A, like yeah. a magician. Like you're doing incredible stuff. Like you can get rid of traumas super fast. You can help people you know, reach these peak euphoric like, moments where they feel like having conversations with God. You know, and that in itself is so profound. He can give yeah. somebody a spiritual experience Amazing. and just change somebody's life forever. You know? oh, so yeah. that's, that's what we're, we're training people to do. Wow. That's incredible. Is that if, if people want to learn more about that, is that on somabreath.com as well? Yeah. So somabreath.com is where you get all the courses and uh-huh. YouTube, you can find a lot of our free stuff. And then we have a Facebook group, which is the community. You can check out the okay. Soma Breath Facebook group and it's a really thriving community. It's, it's an amazing community. So very active, amazingly supercharged people, you know, that's like so cool. everyone's super nice to each other that's that's the what i love about <laughs> these communities that we create is people are like just super high level you know like right. super optimized you know like like high vibration you know? so yeah 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 feel that optimism in the group definitely yeah. i've noticed that just being in um in health circles you know you go to i actually i went to a marketing it was like a I don't know. It was a marketing conference one time and I'm so used to health conferences that I was like, what is this darkness? I find myself yes. in. like, I was like, this is, it was very like cutthroat and secretive. And like, I was like, this is so different. I want to, cause health conferences, when people are optimized and healthy, it's like, what's up? How are you? How can I help you? Everyone's abundance mindset. Everyone's like healthy. You can feel the so vibration true. of that when you're around people so who are true. healthy. <laughs> I totally agree. I've been to those same, same events. It's all that. I was like, I I, this, this is not yeah. my people. This is not my, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys know that. wow. Yeah. I just, you know, I was thinking as you were talking, how amazing it is that y- you had this, this love for music. You had this, you know, here you were probably what in your twenties, you're DJing. You're like, Hey, I'm good at this. I like this. You have no idea what's coming. Like, could you have ever known back then? Like what would be happening now? with those music capabilities, like that it would turn into this like healing community that's changing people's lives. (laughs) Like that is so cool. Well, I I, um, also like formed a band with Wim Hof. Now Wim Hof's like the lead singer. What? We've we've got songs on YouTube. You can check it out. I even wrote an album just recently with his son with all the (laughs) hang hang drums. They're really into playing the hang drum. Check it out. There's a track with Wim on it. It's super cool. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will definitely it's be. It's had doing like it. almost 250,000 views or something already. It's crazy. I oh so much my gosh, that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, like, we're definitely going to do some stuff together in the future. And music is the thing that connects everyone together. You know? Yeah, I actually read one of Stan Groff's books. Speaking of him, he has a, do- a book called LSD Doorway to the Numinous. And yeah. that book was like a page turner for me. He's talking about all of the clinical research, you know, actually going pe- through journeys with people and the similar experiences they were having. And I thought it was so fascinating. And one thing that I love that he said in that book was um, something like, I think that we should actually call it LSD assisted music therapy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that stood out to me so much. It like, is like, music that, therapy. that is how powerful. The well, music- my original <laughs> church was raves. Like I ran like big rave, 2000 people raves wow. every month for three years. Like, that was my first business when I was 19 at university. Wow. And, that I always wanted to be a DJ. That was my thing. Yeah. But and there was so much love in the in the the venues, like the ecstasies, man, that we used to get back then were just <laughs> unbelievable. We had the best yeah. ever time back then. Like now it's like watered down and cut with what whatever, you know, it's horrible <laughs> stuff. But back then it was really pure and everyone was on this insanely euphoric, loved up high. Wow. And it was like church. It was like God was in the room. It was incredible. Wow, I bet. Then over the years, London became more dark. England became darker mm. energy. And like, you know, cocaine got involved and ketamine mm. and yeah. lots of other weird street drugs ended up on the market. And people were like vegetables. They weren't going there for the music anymore. Wow. They were going there to, to take pictures out. of each other and wow. drink cocktails on 
And like, you know, and this is the club, clubbing industry started to evolve a bit. Um, but then I, when I came to Copangan and I discovered ecstatic dance and mm. this is like, literally you get into the same kind of consciousness as we were doing with the MDMA back then. Yeah. But completely naturally, I would, the way I would do ecstatic dance, I'd use the breathing techniques at the same time, but people would just get into these amazing states just with the music and just really good music, not any one genre, but it will take you on a journey. It will be more like a dance meditation. And I was just hooked. Yeah. Saturday dance was the, the thing because you, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. Alcohol yeah. messed everything up in the Totally. <laughs> um, and you're not meant to take any drugs or anything. It's meant to be totally natural. And we had the best parties on this mm-hmm. island. During this whole time, the world's been on lockdown. Like we've been having... This island was was pretty much quarantined and nobody right. could get on it because we didn't have a single case. Right. So life was pretty normal, but we nice. were throwing the most insane parties here. Like we still do. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. We dance parties and they're wow. just so much fun. So yeah, that became yeah. a movement around the world as well. And actually, that's a big part of what we do as well, the ecstatic dance. I don't call mm. it ecstatic dance. We call it breathe and dance because we use the breath with the dance. Huh. And um, and these are things I've I've taken on tour. So you may have heard of Mind Valley. Yeah, I've done some epic shows at, with Mind Amazing. Valley with like four or five hundred people at time. Envision Festival. Wow, uh, we did an event there, and it was like cool. hundred people showed up in Bali just before oh, uh, everything locked down. I was there, and we did a big Saturday dance there, and in this amazing yoga center on the oh beach. Oh my it's, gosh! So there there is this new movement. There's people, and this is music therapy. This is there's nothing more to it than it's just really good music people dancing and getting into profound like vibrational states just with dance and music and the heart and the feeling and that's how you hear people you get people in these vibrations and if you say good positive words of affirmation to people in that state it changes people it it imprints them in a positive way you know a, a lot of people they spend most of the day being surrounded by negativity is the media telling right. them shit that is often not true, giving, instilling fear. Then right. There's media adverts, you know, right. <laughs> telling them that they have a lack of something. So there's yep. still constant anxiety. Right. And then they come home and they're getting shouted at, or their boss is shouting at them, or they're shouting at people. So mm-hmm. there's like a lot of like negative vibrations. But the moment you go into a place like that, you forget about everything. You know, and you get into these high vibe states and just yeah. that little bit of pleasure a week can change somebody's life. Just doing that, having that little break uh, you know, a few yeah. times a week can be enough. Yeah. So we've brought it to home. So now we're doing these through Zoom. We're doing these exciting wow. Zoom. We're doing these breath work ceremonies and stuff cool. through Zoom. We did a, an online fest with the Soma community. Around 5,000 people attended it. And it was just with our little wow. through Zoom. Oh my gosh. So it's, wow. it's crazy what we can do with the internet now. Yeah, that's amazing. I have to ask you real quick before we end. Do you, are you familiar with, yeah. do you know Parangi, the musician Parangi? Do you know him? Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. got some really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, like I don't my, know him personally, but he's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. he's like my music shaman. <laughs> he oh, has cool. taken me through many journeys. Amazing, amazing soul. And I've met him a few times in person and oh, he just cool. reeks sh- shamanic energy. I don't know how else to put it. Like he's just such a beautiful kind nice. soul and really intelligent as well so yeah hopefully you guys can cross right. paths because i'd love to really see good music, something together yeah. <laughs> for sure. oh niraj thank you so much thank you for staying up so late on your part of the world to do this interview appreciate that so much and thank you for thank you for going through everything you had to go through to be able to pull those things together you know like the mu- it's makes total everything makes sense i think you know hindsight's 2020 it's like yep you needed the music piece you needed the education you needed to see all those people suffering see all the bullshit <laughs> you needed to like get sick yourself and like it's just amazing that you took all of that you didn't give up you put it all together and now look what you've done because of it and none of i don't think any of that would have happened if you hadn't gone through your own pain you know so thank you for being the kind of person that instead of just going victim mode like well that sucked and that was hard to say no like why did i go through that what can i do with this well how can i serve so thank you <laughs> no thank you and it's 11 11 like perfect ah, time. beautiful time to That's end <laughs> magic number Ah, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. With us really today. nice to meet you. Yeah, we'll stay in touch for sure.